Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is some of my new Transformer purchases. So all the Transformers that I'm going to show you today are from Hasbro's new Earthrise series, which is the second part in this uh, trilogy they're doing, uh, called, I think, War for Cybertron is the overarching story, and the first kind of chapter of the story they did was called Siege, which is what all the 2019 figures were. And so the premise there was that the war for Cybertron was still taking place on Cybertron. So all the figures released in 2019, um, they all transformed into Cybertronian vehicles. So they were all kind of science fiction, space-based. Um, so here for the second part of the trilogy, Earthrise, they've now landed on Earth and brought their war there. And so this is kind of takes us back to the original Transformers of the 80s um, when they left Cybertron and came to Earth and you know, taking on Earth modes to disguise themselves. So that's what Earthrise is all about. We're getting Siege quality figures, if not better, um, and except they're now all in Earth modes, um, which is pretty cool, because that's how, you know, most old school fans like me know these characters. Um, so yeah, I've picked up a few of them. I'm pretty excited about them. So I will show you the new ones that I got. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the ones that I didn't get. But um, before I get into that, I'll just give you a little bit of an update of what's going on here, um, in case you're watching this, like, the day that I post it. And you might be, because maybe you're bored if you have nothing to do, because everybody in the world is, like, under quarantine. Um, I'm filming this on uh, Wednesday, March 18th. I live in Nova Scotia, Canada, and so far, you know, knock on wood, things are okay here. Um, we only have one confirmed case of the coronavirus in my province of Nova Scotia and we have under 600 confirmed cases all across Canada and Canada is like I think the second biggest country in the world uh you know size wise population we have like 38 million or so so 600 cases across such a big space 38 million so far, so good. And I think our government is doing a pretty good job of trying to get ahead of it. Um, I work for the federal government here in Canada, and they basically sent us all home. Uh, we got an email Monday morning saying, like, don't come to work unless you're, you know, part of an essential service. And the program I work for, um, which has to do with providing uh, employment insurance and stuff to people that are unemployed and things of that nature um it was deemed essential but they didn't need all of us um some people that do the job that i do or were already set up to work from home i was not i went into the office and so right now they basically said the people that were set up at home should be able to handle the workload because it's so reduced right now and uh, if necessary i might have to go into the office for small stints to help out but uh, so far this week i haven't been working and that is what's going to be going on for, I guess, the next three weeks at least. Um, I don't really report back to the office until April 5th. So, you might see a few extra videos from me. Usually I do one a week. Um, but yeah, I'll have some, some time on my hands. So, um, these Earthrise figures, I got them about two weeks ago. And I was excited to talk about them right away. But I got the um, the full wave of Black Widow, Black Widow Marvel Legends figures which was um, based on the new Black Widow movie that I planned to get that review up promptly because the movie was coming out soon and I thought, you know, people might want to see the figures before the movie comes out. But I think it was just officially announced yesterday and we kind of all knew this was coming, but the Black Widow movie has been pushed back and I don't think they've set a new date for it yet. It seems like all the big movies are going to be pushed back um, for several months. So I'll get to those Black Widow figures probably in my next video. Um, but yeah, I first I wanted to review the black hole figures that I got also around the same time. So I posted a video review of those. Uh, if you're interested in figures from Disney's black hole movie from like 1979, um, check that out from two videos ago. And then last weekend, um, I was over at my buddy's having some drinks and we kind of threw together an impromptu drunken toy review video. And that was pretty fun. That was only the second time that I've had, uh, like friends come on and join me on the show so yeah if you if you want to see some you know drunk idiots talk about toys please check out my previous episode um and i should just say speaking of my buddies um if you watched that episode you now know my friends trevor and miguel um kind of the fourth guy in our crew is our buddy ryan so i'll 
we'll put the here's a picture of us all um so ryan here he is on uh, the far left and he is down in uruguay he went down there to meet a girl and he flew out of canada like literally the day um kind of shit hit the fan with this you know, this uh, coronavirus so now he's stuck down in uruguay and he's scrambling to try and figure out how to get home because flights are getting canceled and borders are getting closed and all kinds of of craziness so fingers crossed for ryan to get home safe if you're watching this in your way by chance and you see this guy wandering the streets please uh you know take care of him anyway so uh enough about that let's get into taking a look at the toys now before i get into showing you the new toys that i got um, i want to just talk a little bit about the other toys that were in the line that i didn't get so for those of you familiar with transformers they have all these different classes for all the different size toys they have um, the smallest being the Battle Masters, which are usually guys that turn into just like little guns and stuff for the bigger toys to hold. So for Earthrise, right now there's only one new Battle Master. Uh, his name is uh, Sound Barrier. Uh, and he's, as far as I know, a brand new character. This guy has never existed in any previous toy form or any previous fiction. So Sound Barrier. Will I get him? Maybe eventually. But like I said, I bought these figures and the Black Widow figures on the same day. So I spent a few hundred dollars on all these toys that I really wanted. So when I saw somebody like Sound Barrier, I'm like, well, he's cute. Maybe if I'm in Walmart a month from now and I've got some money burn, burning a hole in my pocket, maybe I'll pick him up. But right now I have no ties to the character since he's brand new and he didn't seem essential to me. He's really small. Those little guys don't have a whole lot of detail. And, you know, considering they just transform into guns, this guy transforms into actually, I think, just a ramp. So that's not super exciting. But, uh, so yeah, that sound barrier, you might add, might be added to my collection eventually. Then there's the, uh, the Micro Masters. And, again, I don't have a tie to any of these specific characters. These Micro Masters, um, they were all originally released. Um, these characters were introduced in 1990. So I wasn't collecting Transformers at that point in time. Um, they were really small figures with very little detail, very simple transformations. It was pretty much just, you know, give them a flip, pop their arms out, and that now they went from car to, to robot. Um, I'll put pictures of them up here. But so there's two two-packs. So one of them is uh, with Autobot, so Trip Up and Daddy-O, formerly known as Big Daddy. And then there's a Decepticon pack with Bomb Shock and Growl. So all four of these characters originally appeared in 1990. Now we're getting new versions of them here now. So if you were fans of these characters back then, I'm sure you'll want these figures. But, you know, like I said, they're still very small, very little detail. It's hard to get excited about them. These two packs are about 12 bucks. Um, they don't feel essential to my collection. Now, mind you, if they start showing up in the Transformers comic books and stuff that I read, and they make them really interesting characters, then all of a sudden I'll want figures of them. But until that happens, I will probably pass on all of the uh, MicroMasters. Then we'll get into the Deluxe. So there were four Deluxe figures released. There was Hoist, Ironworks, Cliffjumper, and Wheeljack. Now, Hoist, Cliffjumper, and Wheeljack are all classic Transformers that have been around since the very beginning of the line. Either released in like 1984 or 85. And I had all those guys when I was a kid. They were all prominently featured in the cartoons, the comic books. So I have a fondness for all of them. So I wanted to get all of them. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find Wheeljack, and I've been out looking for him in the last couple of weeks. Still haven't come across him, so hopefully I'll have Wheeljack soon, and I'll post him on the channel when I do. Um, as for Ironworks, he's basically a brand new character. Um, he was originally released in 1989, but he was literally just a headquarters for the MicroMasters, those little guys. So he was like a crane with a hook. He did not transform. Um, yeah, they called the base Ironworks. So... I'm not sure why, but Hasbro has decided to take that headquarters and make him a Transformer. And so now we have Ironworks. So he's a robot who turns into a little headquarters. And I'm fine with that. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I like when they create new characters, but especially when they can create a new character that somehow ties into the old mythology. So yeah, I was excited about this guy, so I grabbed him as well. Then for the Voyager class, so those are the ones that are slightly bigger than the Deluxe. So there was two. There was Grapple who is another one of the, uh, the, the classic 84, 85 Transformers, um, one that I had as a kid, and I loved them, so I got Grapple. There was also a new version of Starscream, but I didn't really feel compelled to get Starscream because I just got a really nice version of Starscream in the Siege series just last year, 
So pass on him. And then in the leader class, there's a new Optimus Prime and Astro Train. Now, and the same thing with Starscream kind of applies to these guys. I didn't actually see the Optimus Prime to make the call if I wanted to buy him or not, but I don't plan on buying him unless I see him. I think he's totally awesome. But I'm really happy with the Optimus Prime I got last year as part of the Siege line. And I was even happy with the Optimus Prime I got the year before that in the Power of the Primes line. So I'm really not in the market for a new Optimus Prime right now. But if you don't have either of those ones, this one looks pretty cool, so you might want to pick it up. An Astro Train. Um, I got a version of Astro Train a couple of years ago as part of the Titans Return series. And it was adequate for my needs for Astro Train. Astro Train has never been one of my like favorite characters. So I'm not really feeling the need to update him with the new Earthrise one. And it's also quite expensive. He's 70 bucks and he's the same size as the Voyager class. So Grapple was 40 bucks. Astro Train, the exact same size, 70 bucks. And that extra 30 bucks, they kind of, they add a couple little snap-on armor pieces, which I don't think really look good and that I won't use on him anyway. They'll just end up in the spare parts bin. So you're asking me to spend an extra 30 bucks on a bunch of extra junk on a character that I don't really feel like I need to replace. So that's why I passed on uh, Astro Train. So now that that's all out of the way, let's actually take a look at the toys that I did buy. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, as I mentioned, I did buy these figures a couple of weeks ago. Normally when I get a new figure, I try and shoot a video pretty quickly so I can actually show you show you the figures in the box before I open them up and, uh, and take them out. But these figures, I knew it was going to be a little while before I got to this video, so I did open them all up. But I did take a quick little shot of the toys all in their packaging so you could see, see what the box art looks like and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, here's just a quick little insert that I shot a couple weeks ago just to show you what the packaging looks like for these figures. After that, we'll get into the review. So here you see most of wave one of the uh, Earthrise Transformers. So I've got Grapple and Cliff Jumper, Ironworks, and Hoist. So I didn't see Wheeljack, which is the only one of this scale that I think I'm missing. Um, and I also, I passed on Starscream, who is the same size as Grapple, and I also passed on Astro Train who's about the same size, but he comes with some additional pieces and he's a $70 figure. And that was just a little too rich for me right now. And here's a quick look at the back of the packaging for all these figures. So let's first take a look at Hoist. So again, this is a deluxe class figure. So that puts him in about the six inch range. And it is based on the original 1985 hoist figure. So let's get a closer look at him here. Now I loved Transformers as a kid, but I did not keep very many of my Transformer toys. And the reason why, and I've said this on here before, is that the toys just never lived up to what I wanted them to do. I loved how these characters looked in the comic books and even more so the cartoons, but the toys were so stiff and rigid. And that was because they had to be made that way in order to transform. But I never cared about the transforming. Um, I, I hardly ever transformed when I was a kid and I never transform my Transformers now. Um, if you've watched my Transformers videos in the past, you know I, uh, I'm not gonna show you what his truck mode looks like. I don't wanna go through the trouble of having to transform him and transform him back. So this is how, this is how he was when I took him out of the package. This is how he's gonna look when he's displayed on my shelf. And that's really all I need. Um, so yeah, I just really always wanted these things to be more like action figures than, than vehicles. And that's what these new toys give us. Like, I don't remember exactly what articulation the original hoist figure had, but I would guess his legs didn't move at all. And his arms may be kind of an up and down movement like this. But here you see, so hoist, not only do his arms move up and down, he's got like ball jointed shoulder. So his arm, he's got lots of movement there. He bends at the elbow. He's also got a swivel here so he can kind of turn mid arm there. So lots of movement there, his head side to side, up and down, lots of movement there. Um, he swivels at the waist. The original might have done that, but I'm not even sure that it did. Um, he can kick forward. He's got articulation on each leg there so he can move his legs forward and he can move his legs out. Um, he bends at the knee. He's actually got like double articulated knees because he can bend at the top and the bottom. So he can get like full range of motion to get his leg right back like that. You can get him in lots of good, cool little poses. 
See, he's got a swivel on the ankle there too. It's not gonna allow for some additional posing. Like this guy, he plays great, and most importantly, he looks great. Um, I absolutely love everything about this particular Earthrise figure. Um, as far as the paint job goes, um, he's pretty clean looking, although he does have some of this kind of weathering, which would be at the, the front uh, hood of the car. Um, they've been doing that since they started this uh, War for Cybertron line. We saw it a lot on the Siege figures. Not as much with the Earthrise figures, but they're obviously still doing a little bit. I don't know why necessarily, because it doesn't seem consistent. I don't think there's any other spots on here where there's any weathering. So it's really just that front little bit of the hood, and I don't know if it really adds anything to it, but it also doesn't bother me. I don't think it looks bad. Um, so yeah, and as far as accessories go, now Hoist was often portrayed with having like one hand was kind of like a, a weapon, or this kind of almost looks like a fire hose or something, but it is actually a separate piece. So you can see I've got it, he's holding it in his hand, but they designed it in such a way that when you put it in his hand, it it does kind of look almost like it's part of his body. So I like that they did that. If you want to have him with two hands, you can do that. But by attaching his uh, his weapon accessory there, he looks like he did in the vintage line. Now, the, the only uh, real striking difference between this and the vintage figure that I noticed is the head is black here, where on the vintage figure it was green. Um, but this, this color scheme here with the black head, that is more based on how he appeared in the... Uh, in the cartoon. I think these Earthrise figures are mostly inspired by the 80s Transformers cartoon, which is fine by me. Um, they're not overly animated looking, because if they were based on the animated models, I would expect, um, you know, we wouldn't see anything like that weathering. They'd be much blockier and simple. I think these guys are actually pretty detailed and uh, pretty nice. And yeah, overall, I think I prefer the black head over the green. And so yeah, Hoist is just a, a solid figure. I think it's the best Hoist figure they've ever made. Now in the 80s, I didn't own the original Hoist figure. My brother Doug did actually. So I've always kind of considered Hoist more of Doug's character. But um, when I started collecting kind of the modern version of Transformers around the mid 2000s, when they launched their classics line, um, that was the first time I actually owned a Hoist of my own. And they didn't make a good kind of generation one 80 styled hoist until 2013. And that's when I get this version here. So it was still part of the classics line. They were called generations at this point, but um, I was pretty content with this hoist. I thought it, you know, it looked close enough. You know, he obviously transforms into a, a truck with the, the hook there. You know, that yellow striping is very much hoist. Um, you know, he's green, he's orange, and this is a pretty nice looking figure. Like, I think it looks cool. It wasn't really until this new version of Hoist came out that I realized um, just how inadequate this one was. Like, it works as kind of a Cybertronian alternative version of Hoist, I suppose, but it really doesn't compare to this new one here as far as, you know, homaging the figure that you would have had in the 80s so you know it's i think it's recognizable as hoist but i'm very happy to have be upgrading from this version here to the new earthrise figure okay so now let's take a look at cliff jumper so cliff jumper is also a deluxe transformer so this guy um like hoist was also about 30 bucks here in canada at 29.99 I think in the US that would be $19.99 as far as the price point goes. So you see here, he, uh, just a little red dude transforms into a car. His accessory here, now he's got a much bigger gun than Hoist did because uh, Cliff Jumper is often seen in the cartoons and comic books with a big like bazooka like this. Um, it's got a handle here in the middle, it's also got a handle back here so you can kind of change the way he holds it. Um, yeah, and it's it's a great figure. I think this is an awesome cliff jumper figure. But I do have, well, here I'll start with one minor complaint. Um, this doesn't really bother me that much, but the back end of the car, they actually, it doesn't seem like they could figure out a way to transform him and just have it, you know, flip over. You actually have to unplug it 
and plug it back in when you after you transform so it connects you know over here to make the full size of the car um so i know that probably bothers some people a lot more than it bothers me when you have to actually take the guy apart and reassemble them to make it work um but it doesn't bother me that much partly because i never transform them so that's fine my complaint is the price point so like i said he's a deluxe class figure 30 bucks the same as hoist but here's hoist like he's literally half the size of this guy and just giving him a big bazooka doesn't really cut it for me to justify the price like if you really wanted to sell this guy for 30 bucks i figure you've got to give me something substantial maybe he's got a whole nother trailer that he tows behind him and it transforms into like a you know another gun or something that he can mount i don't know or just even better sell this guy for 10 bucks less like they don't really have a price point currently that sits at nineteen ninety nine Canadian, which I don't know in US you know ten bucks fifteen bucks something like that. To be charging me thirty bucks for a figure that's half the size of the other one just seems kind of crazy to me, because in every uh, previous incarnation of Transformers, the smaller figures you know would have been less than the bigger figures. So I really have a hard time with that price point. But I don't necessarily want cliff jumper to be the same size as hoist that's that would be the other alternative they could have taken this figure and just made him this size however even though that would make sense the fact that he's a car he's a truck they should basically be the same size there's no reason for a car to be this much smaller than him as a pickup truck but i'm kind of i grew up on the transformers and the scales were all messed up in the transformers in the 80s but the scale of those figures are kind of what was ingrained in my brain on how big these characters should be like optimus prime should always be the same size as like megatron even though he, optimus is a truck and megatron is a handgun it doesn't really make any sense same as shockwave who also turns into a kind of a science fiction handgun he was even taller than megatron i always felt he was kind of a bigger towering character because the toy was that much larger um and yeah so Cliff Jumper has always been small. Now, I don't have the vintage Cliff Jumper anymore. I did as a kid. Um, Doug, my brother, had Bumblebee and I had Cliff Jumper. Now, the funny thing about these things is uh, they were both released in two different colors. So, even though in the comic books and the cartoons and everything, Cliff Jumper has always been red and Bumblebee has always been yellow, the Cliff Jumper I had as a kid was actually yellow and the Bumblebee that Doug had was red. I'm not sure why they did that. But uh, yeah, that's the way we had it. And it did confuse us for the first couple of years. Um, but anyway, so I don't have the vintage cliff jumper anymore. But what I do have is I do have my vintage, my vintage uh, wind charger figure. So this is another little red transformer guy. And this is the one I had as a kid and I held on to him. But you can see this is the size that the original cliff jumper would have been. And... You know, it was really small. He was essentially like a, a micro master at that point in time. And I don't necessarily need him to be that small. I like that they sized him up a bit. When I started collecting Transformers in the mid-2000s with the classics, Cliff Jumper was a, just a straight repaint of Bumblebee. But here is that classics version of Cliff Jumper. So you see here, he's more in the six-inch scale. He was a little bit shorter than the other six-inch figures. This guy's probably about five inches or so but i thought that was a good scale and a good size for cliff jumper um the only other cliff jumper i have here is a pretty different looking version as he got a, a pretty extreme makeover in the prime series so he was i never watched the prime series and i didn't buy too many figures based on it but the reason i bought cliff jumper is because he was one of my kind of one of my favorite characters and i never felt he got his due um, in the later in the last couple of decades because he it was always being repainted just they would just repaint bumblebees to give us cliff jumper so i liked that in the prime series cliff cliff jumper had his own unique personality his, his very unique um design he was quite different than bumblebee um you know he became larger in scale whereas the bumblebee in prime was still probably you know an inch or two shorter than him so i really liked this figure but it's still not my cliff jumper so We'll focus on the cl classic cliff jumper, and yeah, I think this guy's great. He's kind of based on the vintage vintage toy. Um, there is one key difference I think with the uh, the front of him here. 
This is, you see the car, this is the front windshield where in most versions of Clip Jumper, the windshield is kind of down here. So this would be flipped. Um, I don't really think it looks, you know, better or worse. I don't really have a preference, I suppose. The only thing I feel this figure could maybe use is a, a sticker on the top there, a little Autobot logo. He's kind of a little plain looking, but the main thing for this is the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is really nice. Um, like Hoist, he's got some good articulation, not as much because he's smaller, but he bends at the elbow there, bends at the knee. Um, you know, leg can go forward and sideways. Um, you can also swivel at the ankle, so you can give him some good poses there. The head, you know, a little side to side, a little, little up and down. And uh, yeah, you can get some pretty good poses out of him. So I think this is a pretty great cliff jumper. I think the scale uh, is good compared to the other figures. I just wish that the price reflected that. So uh, otherwise, I don't have a whole lot more to say about cliff jumper. So the last of the deluxe figures that I have to show you is Ironworks. So uh, just so you get an idea of his scale. So when compared to Cliff Jumper, he is substantially taller, but he's still not as big as Hoist. Hoist is still a full head, maybe even a head and shoulders above Ironworks, but uh, I'm fine with that. I don't need every figure in the same class to be the exact same size. I actually like to have a little bit of diversity. I think Hoist is probably the tallest of the bunch. I think Wheeljack is probably gonna be a little smaller than him as well. So that's fine. I don't have any issue with his scale and his price point. So as I mentioned in my intro, Ironworks is essentially a brand new character. They took an existing little uh, outpost headquarters they had and they turned it into a character. And uh, I'm all for that. I think he's pretty cool. Like you see his head design here. So he's got kind of the visor and the face plate. Um, you know, his color scheme is unique. I can't think of anybody else that looks quite like him. I do like that one of his arms is the crane with the hook there. It might be nice if you could maybe flip this around and have the option to have two hands if you wanted to, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty standard for Transformers to have one hand be kind of weaponized like that, um, like with Hoist, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, I'm all for that, and I actually think it adds to his uniqueness. It adds to his uniqueness to have this uh, like hook hand. Now from the back, there's not much to see there. He's pretty plain looking. And uh, yeah, there's, you see these pieces here, they look like they can be, you know, different pieces can connect to them and stuff. And that's exactly what this is. I actually haven't messed around with him at all, but these pieces here, they actually come off. They're not intended to flip around and transform into that headquarters I mentioned. He actually, He's like kind of modular. You do take him apart in order to build the headquarters. And there's not like a one correct way to build the headquarters necessarily. You can snap them together in a couple of different ways. And what's really cool, I've seen some people that have bought multiple versions of him and they've been able to strap them all together and make like a much bigger robot and also make a much bigger headquarters. So yeah, considering all the different options you have of snapping this guy together in different ways, you could come up with lots of cool little bases for your uh, your smaller Transformers. And yeah, I am not going to do that because, uh, like I said, at 30 bucks a pop, this is kind of expensive. Also, he's not a character I have any real attachment to. Um, like, uh, as part of the Siege series, the, the Decepticon that turns into a camera, um, Reflector, who they now call Refractor, um, they essentially released that figure four different ways in different colors, and I bought all those because I really like the character. Um, Ironworks, I have no ties to this character, so I'm not willing to go out and buy, you know, multiple versions of him, especially where he's, you know, it's not even that he's a different color or anything. It's the exact same figure. So, yeah, that's great. If that's what you're into and you're into building little bases and stuff, you might want to do that. But for me, who just likes to display these guys as robots, uh, you know, Ironworks is a welcome addition to my collection. So this here is the last Earthrise figure I have to show you for this video. So this is Grapple, and he is from the Voyager class of figures. So rather than 30 bucks, he is 40 bucks. So an additional 10 bucks. And uh, that's okay, because he is a little bit bigger. So if you bring, we'll bring Hoist back in here again for comparison. So you can see it's not a big difference. 
But uh, Grapple is still about a head taller than Hoist. Plus, he turns into a larger truck, so there's a little bit more going on with him. So, like you see here on the back, Grapple's pretty basic. Or, sorry, Hoist is pretty basic. But Grapple here, he's got this uh, much larger crane here, which extends out. So, yeah. I don't mind paying the extra 10 bucks for that. I feel he's justified considering his size. So let's get Hoist out of here for a second. So Grapple was one of the Transformers that I personally owned as a kid. And I loved that figure. Um, I didn't get it new from the store. I got it secondhand. I don't quite remember how that came about. But I got both Grapple and Inferno. And those two were basically uh, the same figure. Inferno was a fire truck. So instead of the crane on the back, he had a, like, a ladder. Um, but yeah, I loved both of those figures. I just thought they were so great. So many of the Transformers I owned were kind of of the smaller size, um, like the Wind Charger and the Cliff Jumper and stuff like that. I owned a few of the bigger ones, but the majority of my Transformer collection tended to be kind of smaller. And Grapple and Inferno, they felt like nice big deluxe Transformers. They were probably my biggest Autobots. Because um, when I think of some of the other bigger toys I had, like say Shockwave or Thrust is one of the jets, it tended to be more Decepticons. So yeah, Grapple here was kind of one of my main Autobots, probably one of my toughest guys when I played with them and all that sort of stuff. However, as I stated before, they were hard to play with because the original Grapple figure was a brick essentially like he couldn't move his legs were just stuck like that uh his arms i don't think they really moved at all like maybe some up and down like this no movement in his head he was almost like once you got him transformed he was essentially almost like a statue and you could like bang them together but yeah it was just really frustrating because i wanted to be able to play with my transformers the way i could play with my gi joes or with like my he-men so when the classics line started in the early 2000s, Grapple and Inferno were two characters that I was really excited to get new versions of. And believe it or not, I, when those figures came out, they were actually kind of hard to find in my area. I don't know if they were easier, you know, elsewhere, but uh, there was, Transformers were still around, but I think it was maybe still focusing on Beast Wars or whatever else was going at the time. Um, yeah, these classics figures were not easy to come by. Like, I found a few of the main ones, Bumblebee, Starscream, but I never found Grapple, Inferno, Hound, multiple figures I never saw in stores anywhere. And I had to turn to eBay for most of these figures back in the day. And I remember I paid a decent amount of money to get the classics Grapple. And here he is. And, uh, yeah, this is a great figure. Like... You can see the size of him compared to even this figure. He is substantially bigger. He's got a lot of bulk to him. Like just having the front end of this, the cab of this truck take up his whole torso, it just makes him seem like a big linebacker or something. Like I really love this figure. The feet, he's got huge kind of boots there. Just great. And all this armor on his hands. Like you can kind of say that that's just kibble that's folded over the but I kind of like it there it just adds to this armored look uh, on the back there as well you see these kind of armored plates it all looks pretty cool and then the fact that his grappling hook rather than be on the back of him it was attached to his wrist and it kind of just worked like a big weapon and this thing here extended as well um, so yeah it almost looked like he's holding a sword or something loved this figure and the Inferno is the same thing. It's a repaint of that figure as well, except it has a ladder instead of a grappling hook. Um, and they actually reused the same figure again for the other Autobot um, fire truck uh, hotspot. So I had this mold three times and it's a great mold. However, it just didn't feel quite like grapple to me. There's a couple of key components missing. The main one being this whole compartment that houses his head. Now, you could argue that maybe this was only done because the toy had to accommodate it with this big, uh, you know, this big housing for the crane. 
and it was kind of uh, limited the movement of Grapple's head in the vintage toy. They freed him of that here, but even if they could have done without it for this figure, I, I really wanted it there because that's a defining feature of Grapple is having this casing around his head. And I like, as much as this is kind of cool having it as a weapon, I like the crane being attached to the back of his head. That's just classic Grapple to me. It reminds me of how he looked in the cartoons and the toy I had as a kid. Even s smaller features such as the wheels on his feet. So he's got two wheels on each feet here, on each foot here. That's just like the vintage toy. Whereas this guy doesn't have that. His wheels are kind of tucked off to the side, off the side of his leg. So this is a, a great redesign and I would never get rid of this figure. It's great in its own right, but this is the grapple figure I've been waiting for. So let me put up a shot of the vintage toy again, just so you can see the side by side. So you can see there what I'm talking about with the casing around the head, with the wheels on the feet. Um, I think this is a great um, homage and a great update to that vintage figure. And like Hoist, the major difference that you'll probably spot is that the head on this one is orange, whereas the head on the vintage figure was black and the head on the classics version I just showed you was also black. Um, I don't know if I necessarily have a preference. Um, I remember the figure having the black head, but I like this look too because it's based more on the cartoon. So if I bring up an image of the animated grapple, you'll see here that he's got the full orange head and that seems to be what they're going for with these toys. So Grapple has a head that's cartoon accurate, Hoist has a cartoon accurate head, and in the last line, uh, Siege, Red Alert, had a red head like he did in the cartoon, as opposed to a black head like the vintage figure. So yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting, knowing that they're kind of uh, sticking closer to the cartoon look. And yeah, I think it's great. I'm very, very happy with it. Now, as far as articulation goes, so yeah, just uh, like Hoist there, he's got the joint there, mid arm, can bend at the elbow, um, spins at the waist, his head. Uh, he can't really do any up and down, but he can do side to side. Um, his legs there, so he can go side to side, forward, back, bends at the knee, bends at the ankle, um, kind of side the side joint on the ankle there. Um, he can get lots of poses going, so much more than you ever could have got out of the vintage figure and it's great i absolutely love this thing i would say this is pretty much guaranteed to be on my best of the figures of the year list when i do my kind of my top 10 of 2020 at the end of the year and if i'm being perfectly honest i actually think hoist is probably the best of all the figures i've got but it's just because of my personal attachment to grapple since i owned this figure as a kid and doug owned hoist that grapple will probably win out in that regard or who knows maybe they'll both be on my list because they're both awesome so yeah kind of based on how good these figures are it is making me reconsider whether i should buy the new starscream uh optimus prime astro train um because yeah these really do seem to be everything i've wanted out of a transformer figure so i might have to end up picking up a couple extra ones that i wasn't originally planning on so that's a look at the transformers earthrise figures that I have in my collection so far. Hopefully I'll have a few more of them, especially Wheeljack, uh, next time I uh, talk to you guys. But uh, in the meantime, please, uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. We probably all have a lot of time on our hands right now, so feel free to leave me some comments and I will promptly respond. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So I'll see you next time. Everybody uh, stay safe out there and uh, yeah, ciao.